Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Kick and Cover Podcast. Uh, t- today we have Christopher Roberts with us today. He is the special teams coordinator and tight ends coach at Cypress Park High School. Um, on the pretty much the border outside of Houston, however you want to kind of look at it. Coach, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I'm excited to be on here today to get to talk to you about everything we do. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, Coach is going to talk a little bit about his spread punt today and kind of some of the stuff we, he does in there. And um, But first, uh, kind of for people who don't know you, Coach, kind of what is your background? How did you end up at Cypress Park? Um, so – I started, I coached at the, at the high school I went to for two years. Um, and then I went, at, and then I went to Houston Baptist university as a special teams QC with under a uh, Tyler Skubinek, the pretty exceptional special teams mind there. Um, and then, so he, he taught me a ton of stuff, pretty much everything I know about special teams. And then, uh, I needed, like, you don't make a ton of money being a QC at the FCS level. Um, so I was wanting to get married and so I took another high school job and found a great place in Cypress Park to work for, uh, Greg Rogers, actually, absolutely exceptional head coach. And, um, he kind of just let me run with it there. He knew I, he knew I, I knew what I was talking about and then he helped, he's helped me a lot and becoming more organized and running, running a program and stuff like that. Well, that's awesome so, coach. I mean, seriously, like. I mean, especially, I mean, yeah, the, the quality control coach doesn't really typically make a lot of money. And I mean, you see, it's yeah, pretty close to zero. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that, well especially at that le- every level, I mean, too, yeah. like you're not making much there. I mean, you're just, yeah. I mean, but that's part of the reason, like, and I, I've had that conversation for like, oh, well, you have Butch Jones as your quality control coach at Alabama. That's because they can afford to pay him next to nothing because so-and-so is still paying him X amount of dollars because he had a guaranteed yeah. contract. That's why they he's, can afford yeah, that. Yeah, he's still making millions of dollars yeah. or he got a lump sum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, I mean, that's why that's why uh, Brett Bielema made like next to nothing for the Patriots for like, that right. like, couple of years because like, Arkansas was still paying them a crap ton of money. Like, and they know they're going to go make millions in a few years. Like, yeah. you, know, you wait two or three and you're back into it. Yeah, a lot of you stay around the game and learn, so – Oh, so, yeah. so like I said, Coach is going to kind of talk about a spread punt today, and kind of like I've done for the uh, probably past about 10 episodes now, I'm going to kind of just let him get started, and then I'm going to kind of either inject my bad humor somewhere or um, ask a question or we'll have a conversation about something. But, Coach, I'm going to kind of let you just get started into it, and we'll kind of go from there. All right. Let's do it. All right, so one of the main things is uh, for us, we spend a lot, we spend a really good amount of time on special teams, about 20 minutes a day, and then we get about, well, it's probably about 30 minutes a day. We do pre-practice every day. Uh, uh, it's either field goal or field goal block pre-practice, and then it'll be um, our coverage phases, and then our uh, return phases on the next day. So our culture, like this is a slide that I present in our install. Uh, our school logo, our school mo- motto is rise up, compete, and then we added finish. That was one of our big emphasis this year. So, like, as you can see, I'm really big into 90s wrestling. We use that a lot. Uh, then we want to compete like a – we talk about being like a one-on-one game between Kobe and MJ, how competitive that is. And then uh, field goal, we use Tiger Woods as our, as our uh, proficiency guy on how good of a putter he is and then kickoff we want to look like a state track meet or an olympics olympic olympic 100 meter sprint so that's why we have usain on there Uh, and then so our goals this year is we wanted to win the field position battle we want like we i talked i had to teach the guys really about what field the hidden hidden parts of field position and special teams are on how important that on a pin is compared to like being inside the 20 compared to being outside on play calling for OCs. Um, and then we want to, we want to make big plays. We, we want to, we weaponize our special teams. We want big plays happening. We play a lot of starters. Um, like we have, we have several division one guys and they all play on it. I show them like everybody was going nuts in the Alabama game with Devonte Smith, uh, covering on punt and their starting corners on kickoff. We have that same mentality at Cypress Park. 
Uh, we want to be the most prepared. And the biggest thing for us is we want to be penalty free. We want to play fast. And we want to be competitive. Now, uh, Coach, you mentioned the um, uh, winning the field position and kind of some hitting yardage. Did you actively track the hitting yardage, or is that something you kind of? Just... I, I haven't I haven't finished it yet, but we like there's big reward for pins and yeah. and getting first downs through our punt system. Okay. Yeah, we we celebrate it pretty big, and then um, like I'll I'll show after a little while um, that like our helmet stickers for punt. On what they get them for. Okay. Uh, so we call this jet spread rugby. Um, so our formation is our from our guard through our quick. Or everybody in the core is finger should be fingertips apart, and then you have we call this guy. This is our our Z and our Y. The Y splits the distance between the our tack our F and our uh, quick tack or our Z. So we're we're a wing T program, so I use I use the same uh, same lettering as our offense does. To try to help the guys out. This that, is our B. Now are you are you wing T or slot T? Because we are wing T. Okay, I didn't know if you were part of the mafia or not. Yeah, no, we are we're a strict <laughs> wing T. Um, yeah. So then, um, what we want to do is we want to push the edge as much as we can on the rollout and allow our guy as much time, our guys, as much time to get downfield as possible. We want to spend that time in the operation and moving the pocket helps us do that a lot. Um, that year, uh, or in 2019, we gave up uh, less than 100 uh, punt return yards, which was really nice. And then, so everybody's pretty much on the, we'll go over the front side stuff. Um, Biggest thing is forcing the issue on the edge there. Uh, for our personnel, what I, what I look for is since we are a wing T team, most of our guys and our guys all play both ways. Um, everybody, we have probably have like three or four guys that play defense only or offense only, but even our linemen play both sides of the ball. Um, so... What we, what we try to do, I try to use the exact same lingo or language as our as our offensive staff or our defensive staff does. Uh, so what we look for in our gunners is obviously receiver DB types. Most of those guys marry up with being the X or being a corner or safety. Uh, our two inside guys actually played uh, our weak side or our bandit, which is our weak side outside linebacker. But uh, they also play X, so they have that ability to get off the line and man coverage, and and then get downfield and make the tackle. Um, and then interior wise, with our for um, for the F, we use a running back and DB. We actually had a freshman take over this job this year and did a really good job. Here's here's where we play our best athlete this year. Uh, because this is where most of our fakes come from, or our primary fake comes from. And then I use uh, our one of our we used our quick tackle here this year uh, because we usually have a D lineman we have to take care of. Then um, quick guard, since I coach the tight ends, I play a lot of them on special teams. So we have tight end here and a fullback and a thicker fullback inside linebacker right here. Uh, and then for our snappers, I, I, I really like uh, more athletic guys. I don't really care about size all that much. I want guys that, that have uh, some fast twitch muscle to them that can absolutely that can zip the ball and then get down there in coverage and make plays. But all these guys also uh, have the ability to block and have practice that. So this year, our starter was outside linebacker, um, senior. He was a one-year starter and then – our one-year varsity player, he took over that job and did a tremendous. And then the backup was a soft, our starting tight end. He was a sophomore. And then in playoffs, our last two games of the year, I ended up starting our freshman deep snapper. Uh, and because he's he's probably a true Division One snapper once he once he gets physically mature, his his ball is straight line, right right where you want it on field goal. Uh, he gets the laces more times than not. So he's, he's going to be a pretty special snapper. Uh, and then usually in our system, we, 
we try to find the best athlete that can punt. Um, so that way our fakes are more in play than the punting. But um, this year, our I, we have a sophomore kicker who's he was on varsity last year as a freshman, and it's his second year starter, and he really came on as a punter this year. As to where last year he didn't really perform in that aspect, he was more of a kickoff field goal guy. But he's becoming more of a combo now. So with his hang time and distance, we were getting what we wanted, and then he's a uh, He's a two. He starter. He started as a freshman on the varsity soccer team as well. He's a striker. Um, he played. He's played international soccer for a few for a few years. He's, he's on like the Guatemalan national team. So okay. He's he's a pretty talented athlete. Even though he's probably about five six, a hundred pounds. <laughs> uh, so here we are. This is a one of our the second to last game of the year. Uh, how we modified it to him is he. He would take what I was trying to teach was more traditional steps on punt, and, but he would aim further outside because this is technically where your two shield guys are. Yeah. Um, so he's going to step out wide, really try to push the ball to the numbers as close as we can get it. And those guys have to sprint down there, go chase the ball, get it down. Obviously, you're going to show your best punts first, but yeah. You doing? Well, you're good. Hey, you're a good coach. No, so, and then uh, so really with him, like just that those few steps out wide kind of threatens the edge enough. And as you can tell, they're devoting. Um, they have two guys playing fake to our strong side because that's where most of them have come from. And then um, we try to seal the edges here for us to try to keep contained. But he probably would have probably would have had that one if he took off. Here's another, another one. Um, so from the left hash, we want to push. I teach him to push further right, really try to get it out to the numbers as far as possible and let it and let it roll. Then big thing for us this year is now that he's kind of gotten down the more traditional punt is we're working on roll, getting the rollout and hitting a true like Aussie style rugby punt. What they were working on learning for him. And as you can see, our guy here, this is our starting fullback. He's a, he was a thousand yard rusher this year. He did big time for us on special teams, knew everything, knew what the guys around him needed to do. And he helped our freshmen here a lot in communicating on who to block. See, when we could work out, kick those guys out right there and seal them. That's a good fan, coach, across the yeah. board. That's a very good fan by both of them. Yeah. Well, the big thing was the reason I could trust the, this freshman to play was because I knew these these two veteran guys were going to make sure he was right. So that I thought that was probably one of our better reps of the year, um, even on the on our quick side. So I, we flip our line. So in uh, special teams, we have a strong side and a quick side to help the guys out. So he he's his job is to take care of the inside gap and then fan out. He does an excellent job here of making sure that guy's not in where we want to be. Uh, another another rep. Even when we get uh, one of our big things is we want they have to keep people in coverage because you have four guys eligible here, two guys here. That's one one reason I we we don't use a traditional shield system is we want to take as many people out of the rush as possible, and then even when they commit to it to trying to get a block as soon as things they can we're going to have enough we're going to have the protection we need to get through it another thing on this rep is the adjustment uh right here by our our uh, strong tackle there his job is to take a flat step outside and reach but as soon as he feels that inside pressure he does a great job all you have to do is push that guy away from the punter and that that's all we needed there. So our guys kind of do the how we, I think how we practice it and how we install it, it helps them a lot on, uh, on being able to understand where block, where the pressure is coming from, where they're trying to go. Where 
improvements. But so for us on how we block things up, or we start, we'll start outside in. Our outside guys, I want them to take a mandatory outside release. I want them to force the issue out wide because it opens up better lanes for our inside guys who usually are the ones that make the tackle okay. for us. Um, so they, they, the inside guys get to take best release. Usually they have hard inside leverage uh, press technique from their corner uh, or, or DB, whoever's trying to press them. Then uh, as we get to the strong side, their their number one job is to take, they take a flat step, like they're trying to reach get inside hand to outside shoulder. And when we do a traditional rollout, we want to turn and seal those guys in to give us that edge. And then what we do is we count from outside in on the strong side. So we have the first four threats. Uh, so the F has the first threat, no matter how wide he is. And then he'd have, the strong tackle would have the second, and the uh, strong guard would have third. And the snapper is our, our uh, is in charge of the fourth guy if there is a fourth guy. Usually they have two or three guys uh, playing safe. So what we'll want to do is they'll communicate on who they think the threat is. We were we didn't really see anybody come from depth this year. They stayed back there, tried to play the fake as much as they could, and then so. Usually this guy, our snapper was free to release after, after communicating with our strong guard. And then, um, for our quick tackle and quick guard, they both take a rocker step in, just, uh, it's like a six inch step in They have their number one concern is their inside gap and then, uh, fan out. Usually we had a guy head up on the quick guard. So he was able to take that rocker step in and then the quick tackle would usually rocker step in and then fan out an outside threat. Man, let's see, where's my, um, and then we also flipped, our, we flip our formation to, uh, we had our quarterback and, um, another one of our athletes are left footed. And I really like how, how people struggle with, uh, judging a ball off the left foot, especially <laughs> off the spiral. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a left-handed quarterback. It's, it's, Different little mechanism there. Now you said you flipped your line there, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. for 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 this, everybody just flips essentially sides. Yeah, the the whole formation flips. Okay. Same exact job. Same exact jobs. Okay. And so if we wanted to go left, I could switch out the punters. Uh, we started in rugby this year, going left with our quarterback, and then we switched over to our our uh, starting kicker, and so we went back to rugby. Um, and then for him, for us to get him to go, to be able to kick left, we call what we call the yak blue or a y at, y at the center or across center. And then he would yeah. join in and, and the protection part of it. How, how much, how much of that motion or shifting did you actually do this year? Uh, we started doing that pretty late. So I think okay. we ran it like three or four times. Okay. And I wasn't very much. Cause I see that, that that's become like a comp I'm starting to see in college and in high school is a lot of guys are starting to like shift their motion on their punt mm-hmm. just, just to create a lot of problems. Yeah, we did. We, uh, we did one where we sent the, the B or we, we put the Y on the line and sent the B across. Yeah. Uh, we also stacked, stacked our, uh, Y and Z at one point because we were struggling to get off man coverage. And then when we went stacked, they backed off. So our guys got free releases. Okay. Um, but I I like this a lot, especially when we went left, because it's like the head coach and I's biggest concern was kicking to a two man surface. Yeah. Having such a short edge. Yeah. I think this is it. Yeah. So here we go. We motion them all the way across. Tell her. They're not really concerned with the man coverage part of it, I get um, there. They don't shift anybody. But we have to we had to do a better job on the front side. But as as you see, he, he kind of takes he's slow, or he should be slower. And he's got that outside threat to create a lane there. We need better steps from the punter, but we want it he actually was able to push it left where we wanted. Do you, do you have an operation time goal, Coach? Uh, no. I let him do it off the of field. 
Okay. I, I really want it to kind of take as long as he can. Like, yeah. I, he's not in a rush. Since we're not going to do the traditional rollout, yeah. uh, I want him to take his time. That's that's why these guys, uh, the core, doesn't have any um, coverage responsibility until they are for sure that the ball has been kicked. Yeah. Good. So I let him take his time. Um, and he's pretty good. Like like I said, he's he's a pretty a pretty special athlete for being a for being so small. And he's he's got a pretty good feel of when to get the ball off. Like, uh, if we did a shield though, it would, I'd want it to be really fast. Yeah. We did a traditional shield one. Yeah. Yeah, like here, here's us do it. We also called cross left. Here's an example of that where I'd have him go ahead and take the right steps and then flip his hip cross. Is like I say, he has pretty good timing on when to get that off. Because a lot of a lot of teams were going ahead and put sorry, you good coach putting their uh, putting their guy pretty much on the hash because we were kicking right so much and to, to the boundary, of course. And so they this guy's pretty talented dude. He, he runs a he's a legit four three guy starter on their four by one. So we were trying to kick away from him as much as possible. That's why we installed that, that on that week. Here's our rugby clip from our first game of the year. Formation shifted. We're a little too deep here. I tell these guys, only one of them about a, like one one yard back and then fingertips apart um, right there. So would prefer them to be a little bit, or they're a little too deep there. But they do a good job communicating on the block. With the quick tackles, uh, or the strong guard, sorry, his feet got to be a little bit better on getting to that guy and sealing him on his reach step. And then that's our starting quarterback punting right there. Uh, what I look for on those guys, if, if they can consistently hit 30 to 35 yards uh, with, and the end over end style kick that we try to get them to do, um, I think we're going to be all right because we're – we're not going to give up any cover or any return off of that. No, and you're going to get probably a good roll off of it as well. Yeah, like, I mean, cause that's you're... why. Why we try, like when I'm teaching those those guys that don't usually punt or haven't punted before, but we but we want to be the better athlete back there. We try teaching to strike it low with the ball kind of tilted more straight up. He hits it, he drops it flat right there, but kind of more of that traditional like up and down Aussie style. Yeah. But he was still learning on that. Yeah, but the nice thing is with all those, all that turf and, and the fact that how you're kicking, you're going, you're going to just get a natural good roll. Yeah, so. we we don't we don't play on grass at all <laughs> in the Houston area. <laughs> um, let's see. Then we'll go to. So one of our big things. Let's see if there's more slides. One of our big things is we want to get first downs. We want to extend plays, or we want to extend drives. Uh, this is our second game of the year uh, against an exceptional team from, in Cy Fair High School. Uh, one thing we do, so here we, we're in Lugby right now, is we want to check who's covered. Okay, so we, we start with our quick side, or from our X to our, to our B, and then how many guys do they have on this side of the center? To, to our next fake, and then what's open to our to our strong side. Here, he feels the pressure, didn't feel comfortable punting, so he's going to go ahead and take off, get the first down there. The big play, uh, all but one time that we we ran a fake, and we're or we were 100% on fakes this year for fourth down conversion, and uh, only one time did we not score after running one. So it was pretty big for us to be able to steal drives and extend or extend drives. Um, it's kind of still try, still new in the protection phase of it, but he was smart enough to be able to tuck it and go. Uh, and then, so, uh, so here. 
like what I was t talking about was starting, we start with our X to our B on who's uncovered. So for us, our B is now uncovered. Yeah. And since he's on the line, we're going to go ahead and have him bubble. So he'll take big, a big step back behind the line of scrimmage. And, and then we'll go ahead and chunk it out there to him. And that, that's a thousand yard rusher right there. <laughs> uh, about 15 that good. on purpose. That's a, that's our wing back. Uh, he's a, he's probably the hardest tackle to make in our district right now. But right, like so, this is our this is last year's uh, 2019. That's our that's a that's our uh, starting wing back, big time producer. That right here, number four, he's the number one linebacker in the nation for 2022. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Also, pretty much, uh, he was like probably about 20 yards short of being a thousand yard rusher this year, too. That sucks when that yeah. happens. I had one kid miss it by 14 one year. Yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking, but he was, he was averaging like, I think he averages like 11 yards per carry, so there's not too much to be sad about. Um, so, like I said, our starters are playing. That's our starting quarterback right there. The safeties and corners uh, starting on the outside to the other side. Um, he thought it was, I'll show this fake here in a second, but he, he got the wrong call. That's why he comes across like that. But uh, it's supposed to be a bubble to where he goes outside, but it can't falter when he goes and gets the first down. Yeah. So that's our first check. Thing. If that guy's uncovered, we want to throw it out there. But with our um, with our true kicker out there, this year, he wouldn't throw the ball to off the pass anytime soon. So we, that was kind of eliminated. But the threat is still there, and that's the important part for us is you have to stay over there and cover that guy. Yeah, I get it, Coach. I said, that looked good. I mean, like when you can let your athletes play in space, you usually have success. Yeah. Then, uh, so here we are in rugby. This is our – this was a game that – this is a fourth down play. I think it's fourth and third. Uh, this was the, our last regular season game where we had to win to go to playoffs. Uh, this is this is a fake we do. So what we do is we count the quick side. So we these two guys covered. Right? Who do they have from the snapper over? They've only got two. And this guy's too deep. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the fake here. Um, so we're going to read this in man on the line of scrimmage to do a shovel pass. So everybody sees the fake call. We signal it. They're running guys on. They don't really know what to do. So we got a shovel pass to the inside. And then that's, that's our second read on our fakes. That's what we look for next after seeing making sure those guys are covered. Uh, first, first down. Yep. And the next play 55 yard touchdown. So, Big time. That was a big time play for us. Yeah. And him being a run a run threat, they have to honor him with this guy out here. As you can tell, this guy's totally concerned right here. Uh, but we hadn't run this since we ran this twice last in 2019, and then we had saved it. And this was the first time we ran it in 2020. We get the first down there. Big play for us on that. As you tell, he loves football, which is crazy. Uh, or for a kicker, he's exceptionally passionate about the game of football. He's always, you know, always telling us he can go play corner or receiver. <laughs> like, man, nah, you're good. And so, we'll give him the option to option to run anytime. It's probably like, I think fourth and eight and in. Uh, we'll give him the option to run because here, like, like we said, we have. We have, we couldn't throw, we knew he wasn't making this throw this year, so we weren't going to call that. So we kind of changed it to where if, if we have two on two over here or two guys, not enough guys over there protecting, we're going to go ahead and give him the option to run. I give him a little signal to go to the field. So he'll take off on these guys. And number 11 definitely didn't know that that kid is uh, – uh, exceptional, uh, like a forward in soccer, probably runs a four six or faster. He's pretty quick. Yeah. So this kid definitely was like, "What's going on? This kid should not be that fast." But 
but he gets lit up <laughs> there at the end. Uh, and then for strong side run, um, here we gave him the option to run because we were down and we needed a big play. He put his foot in the ground, tried to go through guy, but we'll give him the option. He's he's pretty good about um, cheating in space. Yeah be able to hit it. So that's why we stuck with him, even though we want to run fakes as much as we can. And here's that stack look as well, up top. Um, so yeah, I, how, how, I mean, obviously you have your rugby and rugby, but how much more do you get with formations? Because like, like the stack look in there, how, how exotic do you get with that stuff? Um, so really, I, I never felt like I needed to go away from it. Because because of how our guys were ingrained on making the reads, and these guys, and like I said, this this, this senior, or this, he's a junior, but he's a senior, he's a second year player on varsity. He he was able he he'd look at it and be like, oh, coach, try to give me the signal, and I'd be like, no, we're not. Doing it. <laughs> but I um, I did have one. I didn't. We didn't get to run it. I called it Jet Quattro Blue. I brought these four guys over. Uh, we'd be so they'd be over here in kind of a diamond fork or we'd have three guys on the line with one guys in the one guy in the back the Y over here in the back and then uh, we would have brought the F over to play to where we had um, yeah one more guy right here so we, we wanted to kick left so we called it jet quattro blue and uh, he would have would have given them I think they would have brought a couple more guys out of the rush um, but I never, never really had the need to call it. And they only get ten minutes to versus, maybe. So yeah, for how much, how our system works, and then how they have to prepare for it. I don't. I think we still have the advantage. It's like same same thing with like our with our offense. You get a week to prepare for it. We played five Thursday games, so you have two days to prepare for wing T when everyone else in our district besides one other or run spread pretty much. Um, we have one school that does triple option for a series and then we'll go to spread and then go back. That's pretty fun to try to end. And then um, there's a slot T school in our program, our district. Uh, slot T, uh, we had, we, that came up in one of my group texts the other day, just like, them talking about it, I'm like, you're not going to find out anything about it. They don't talk to people. They don't say anything in public. It's, <laughs> it, it is legitimately a, a secret society. Like they don't, oh, yeah. yeah, don't. Yeah, they like Liberty Hill won their playoff game uh, yesterday. They run slot T and they put up 717 yards. I, that's where that came up because I got sent out to one of our group chats and it's like, yeah, they're good. They're really good at what they do. Like I don't know what you te- what we tell you. They run the slot T. No one knows much about it unless you're part of the the secret yeah. society. You're on that staff. Yeah, you're on that staff, or you've played in the system. Like so, whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of go over an install now on how we do it. Um, so what'll happen is I'll the we break it up. Uh, I'll like at the beginning of the year, I coached the uh, strong side and our assistant O-line coach did quick side while our receivers coach uh, was coaching up the releases by the gunners. Um, I didn't really worry about them practice tackling because they do that with the defense. I didn't think that was worth, worth time on during special teams time, uh, as opposed to getting our, our tailbacks and our uh, guys like our wingbacks and tailbacks getting time to work releases, which they don't really get to do out like with run polish and routes on air. We probably do routes on air for like five, 10 minutes. Yeah. So they really, really don't get a ton of work out. So I thought it was better for us. And a couple of the guys that only play DB needed that work. Um, then our head coach, he, he's the one that showed me that taught, that gave me this system and taught me about it. Um, obviously we didn't run this at HQ. Uh, and then, so and then our quarterbacks coach worked with him so he could coach he could learn it uh and he he played for our head coach in high school so he he had done this done the system before and then uh as we went on our i i took over with the punters full time uh, and our head coach went to the quick side 
I, um, like last year he did the signals. Um, and then this year he let me do them and call and call all the fakes and stuff. So a lot better step in the right direction for trust there. Um, he trusts me to make the right calls on that this year with my experience. No, I wanted to fake it every single time. <laughs> but that's part of being a young coach, I think. <laughs> uh, and then, so at one point in the season, I really didn't like how our uh, protection was going. So I went ahead and split us up and did half line. We'll work this, we'll use this a lot more this year in the summer. And uh, we're getting, we get a like an hour and a half after school now to do uh, what we call sports specific instruction and uh, strength conditioning. So they're giving us more time since we have virtual learners and we have a uh, in person gives us time to work with both sets of kids and keeps it fair across the board for everybody. Yeah. Um, so I take the punters and the snappers and coach both. And then we'd have one coach running uh, the, the strong side and then um, one coach running the show team and one coach running quick side with, with the, the guy running the show team there. And then our corners coach and our, our receivers coach went out here, coach releases and uh, press technique at the same time. Against so that was, that was pretty much this was all live right here in the release. So they had to work against different types of leverage there. I think it helped us a lot because we saw a lot of different looks in our 10 minutes. And usually, like I draw it up like this, like with the one line, but there's going to be two or three groups of guys going. So that way we have depth. And we did this really towards the end of the season when we were able to have like our uh, our JV and our freshmen that that will be on varsity next year they're up. So we had a lot more depth to work with. And we ran this system, uh, freshman B team through varsity. So that's something big for me too, is I want them getting to varsity and like taking those guys that aren't our big time playmakers and developing them into role playing special teams guys. Like yeah. that way when they're juniors or seniors uh, getting moved up, they're like, there's no question about what they do on special teams because yeah. they can't do anything. No, I like uh, it. I like it, Coach. I, I, I personally like a lot of – I mean, there is the individual period, but I prefer like the half and the group work more than anything. Or, oh, yeah. or where you can split your coaches up well. Or you, this group's working down here. This group's working down here. Um, just to maximize reps and potential. Right. Like we have a – like in Texas, we we have fourteen co- football coaches on staff. Yeah, and we coach. We we since both guys play bo- both sides of the ball, all guys play both sides of the ball. Um, we have uh, we have time to be able to coach or like our JV practices separately. And so when defense is going, offense is coaching JV, and then we flip or we do specials and we flip. But um, so when I'm when I'm working with the offensive staff on punt. The defensive staff will be working punt or kickoff with JV, and then we'll flip. Where I'm now working with the defense, the second set of special teams periods. I'll do kickoff with defense, and the offensive staff and then my main offensive assistant will go and coach punt over there. Okay. So, and then uh, how we do punt to maximize reps is the ones are on the. On 130, the twos are on the other, and they're facing in towards each other. Um, and then we have a show team in between them. So the show team will be getting coached, and they'll line up against the ones. We'll run that rep. I'll coach it up real quick, run it again if we need to, and then we'll sprint the show team and the two shows, and all the coaches will sprint down to the second group and get them and get them to do the same rep and. And then we'll flip and we'll sprint back down to the ones and we bounce back and forth. There's some variation, like sometimes we have to go, we'll go two or three reps in a row with the ones and go one rep with the twos. But it's just kind of how we, how we uh, feel it's going there. Yeah. Uh, like it's, it's definitely scripted and everything, but we want, we want to make sure everything's getting coached well. And we're not just trying to go fast to go fast. I'll get you there. Um, and then I have our show team coach. Uh, he will give the the next play call to the next huddle. So like we'll be like um, he'll be like, all right, we're going we're going rugby. Uh, he'll go jet spread rugby. They'll get lined up, and then he'll get show the show team 
what to do, and then or and he'll have the next like he'll make sure those guys are ready to go, and then uh, the show team will be good. And so we rotate like even even with coaching, like I want these guys to know exactly what they're coaching and who's supposed to be playing what. So I'll label who's rotating. Like if I want two guys exactly to be rotating, that's who it needs to be. I took their names off of it. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then the two guys that are punting here, who's punting first and who's, who's next. Uh, and then the coaches have their names on where they are. And then kind of the landmarks, like our press box, this we have three fields in a row that we practice on, and so we so we have a donut shop across the street, kind of <laughs> landmarks there for them. This is something uh, Coach Skubanek taught me, at, or I use his drill cards from HBU, what he gave me. So, like, try to make it as detailed as possible. Uh, this is kind of a rough deal. I couldn't find my 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 one from this season, but uh, I made this one last night. So our specialist ID circuit uh, during the summer. We put every single freshman through this. It will even take time to, if we need to reestablish who's going to be kicking and punting and snapping on JV or even returning, uh, we'll put them through this again. So we'll have, we'll put our O-line coaches down here and uh, they'll judge the snaps. Each kid gets two snaps. uh, And then if it looks good, they can get, they'll get more. If not, they'll be told to go get in line somewhere else. Uh, and then they rotate through. They kind of go. They go down the sideline. Two kids. You run out. You catch one punt. You you throw it back. You go to catch the other one. Uh, most of the time, it's chasing a ball. But uh, you find out who the guys who can judge the ball the best are really quick. And then same thing with punting. They'll rotate through. You get what You get two punts. Uh, one rollout. One traditional. See who can. See if there's anybody that can rip the ball, and then you get two shots to kick a PAT. But yeah. um, I go to we go to a lot of junior high games. Like they, we just opened a junior high right next or on the same campus as us. So we go to those games, and then our other feeder. Um, and so I usually know who's coming in as the kicker. Like I know we're getting the starting 18 kickers from both schools this year. So we're really excited about that. Um, Usually we've just been getting one, but when we, since we want to have the better athletes punting, it helps us a lot to put all those guys through the, through the circuit to see who can snap. And we had a legitimate three deep on the freshman team for snapping, which was really nice. And so next year we'll be able to have uh, true snappers on, or guys that are practicing snapping all the time, uh, snapping yeah. on both JV teams and uh, on varsity there. Okay. Yeah. Man, big thing for me is like I get a lot of time to work with them. So like when we're doing summer camp and the defensive staff is going, they have all the kids that are not uh, like our group is uh, we go nine through 12. So they'll, the defensive staff will have all those kids and then I'll get the specialist. Okay. And so I'll work with them all summer. It helps us develop them, develop a relationship with them to where they want to keep playing football. Um, and then – so like this year, our freshman kicker, he, we built up a relationship, and he actually ended up being the starting tight end on the freshman eight team, even though he had never played a position before. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, but like he's got a cannon. He hit uh, from, he had a thirty-eight, a forty, and a forty-three yard field goal in games this year. So he's going to be a pretty special talent too. I think he had eight touchbacks, true touchbacks, like three or three or four yards deep. So he's he's got a cannon, but uh, he's a little bit thicker than uh, of a of a soccer guy than we've had before uh, compared to the the sophomore that we have on varsity. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's not running any any fakes for a first down. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's uh, what it is, coach. Yeah, but he's uh, he's he's gonna be pretty special too, I think. And then. Um, we usually have like two or three deep on each team of guys who can punt and snap. And, and uh, same thing with holding. Holding, I usually pick out guys. Um, like our our holder this year on varsity was the backup quarterback. Um, and then the next, his backup was a receiver. Uh, next year, uh, we're going to have 
have, probably have a receiver doing it, and his backup will be that freshman tail tailback we have. Okay. Um, so you want a better athlete there, just in case stuff goes bad. Yeah, because uh, so this year, like uh, we had our right tap, our right tight end was a lineman, and then uh, with with Corona, like coronavirus and guys just not a. Uh, not having the same people each week. Uh, we had to rotate a lot of guys to where some weeks we had two linemen as tight ends or, and so we had to make sure that the guy back there could distribute the ball. But like I said, we start like, uh, our starting fullback was, was the left wing and, uh, the, our tight, our, we had two sophomore tight ends that rotated. And so the, the left tight end was a pass catcher and could have done anything we asked him to do. So we weren't too worried about it. Um, and then, so yeah, I w- but I want, I want a better runner this year. That way it's probably more likely he'll be able to get to the edge than, than not. Yeah, no, I get also, it. What? I, I get it with the system you run, you kind of need to be able to, it'll just your cult philosophy too is you guys are a lot more aggressive. You need athletes in space. Well, what a field goal like for me, field goal is or PAT is where I think our kickers are going to get recruited from, and then like the fakes and stuff, and the, all the, the different onside kicks we do. I don't I'm not sure how much college coaches are going to really be into that. Yeah. Like how much difference that'll make, um, but I think what I think will help like our Bart, our the guy that's the starter on varsity right now. I think will help him a lot is how coaches see, like, when I was pre meeting, is this guy passing football? What does he do after the play? And our guy's always going nuts after he makes a play. So, he and he loves the game. Um, I, he does show team for us here and there. It's pretty funny to watch. But uh, that was our install slide. <laughs> We're, we want to be – our colors are black and Vegas gold, so we wanted to be the gold standard of our district. And then acting on verb is action, not words. Latin. The kids had no idea what Latin was. But. Yeah, I get you, coach. Uh, so I, I gave the guys the drill schedule. Our coaching staff had their drill schedule. Um, I did about the first or like the 12 days of, of camp before school started. Um, I had that already planned out going into the season because we had a ton of time, uh, obviously, in the summer. So – our guy, our coaches had a had a good idea of what of what they were going to be doing before we even got to those days and what their responsibilities were. Now, how did you did, when you taught your coaches their drills? Did you just draw them up on a board and show them? Did you send them film? How did you teach your coaches their drills? So we did clinics this year. Okay. Uh, to prepare for having COVID, our head coach made us teach our position to everybody on staff. So on the drills we our everyday drills what we do so mine mine took a while like last well, last year i was the running backs coach so i had to go through three different positions and then <laughs> uh, we did a day of special teams of, of what we do and we had all our junior high coaches there too so that they can run the same things we do um like the the one the junior high that just opened on our campus they run everything we do they're wing t they're three four on defense and the only thing different is their punt. They do, they kind of do it more of a pro style punt, which is totally fine. Yeah. Uh, they had because they had a lineman punting, and he's a big old kid. He's not running anywhere. Sometimes you gotta do that, coach. If he's, he's got legs, he's got leg. I mean, yeah. I was totally fine with that. Uh, they got they got to do what they can do to win at the end of the day. Yeah. But um, and then our other school is split, um, so they do some of. They do some wing T and then some spread. So uh, they do um, they do a, a more of a spread style punt. They're in doubles, but they don't. All five of their linemen are on the line, and they're a one shield guy. Um, so those. So we taught. I taught everybody that, and we had to film it too. Yeah. So we filmed it. We put it on a Google Drive, or put it on the shared Google Drive we have, Google folder, and then. Uh, so that way, if any coaches were out, you could go watch what they did and how to do it. Yeah. Stuff like that. And then, uh, and so I walked them through each drill. Which that took a pretty solid amount of time for special teams. Uh, and then 
Um, every day they get a packet of, of here's our, our kind of our practice script. So what they would do, I'd say kickoff period, each coach would get their responsibility. Okay. Uh, and then kind of the date, time, who we're playing. This is from our playoff game. Um, and then field goal, we do field goal pre-practice. Uh, those are the kicks we go through, go through our fakes. Uh, tackle, we do tackle over uh, inside the 15. Uh, and then... And then uh, our kickoff script, um, like Tom Memorial, they had a receiver that's going to USC, so we weren't we weren't going to kick anywhere near him. Um, and then uh, our punt stuff, what we call it, and so the coaches would have an idea, and then I'd put the, the depth chart would be attached to it. Okay. Um, so they they'd have a good idea of what's going on today, and then all our uh, all our um, plays there, yeah. See, like um, like our every drill diagram would be on there, so they each play would be diagrammed, and they could just open it up, see it, show it to the kids, and like that's something um, I'm big about is like even for our freshmen, our JV teams, we take like I lam for varsity, I laminate every special teams play we had, and so that way I can. When I'm in the huddle, I show the kids as we're doing it. Even if we we're, we kicked off, we went deep left almost every time, but I still showed it to them. Uh, make sure they have any questions that they knew. And we would do that for JV and freshmen as well. That way you have the depth right there. You have the play. Uh, if you have to sub somebody in real fast, you can show it to them. Uh, so that I think I think that helps a lot in being prepared as a special team guy. Because like I said, you get. You get 10 minutes a phase, if that. So you really have to make sure that you're covered on game day and yeah. that those guys can get out there and know what to do. No, I get you, Coach. And so, I mean, that, my, my, I mean, how much help do you get on game day in terms of? Uh, uh, so uh, I, give, I give out a coach's responsibility chart every week, um, and it has – it goes through each phase and tells the coaches what they're looking at. Um, I don't have a box that lets me communicate with the defensive staff, uh, like a headset, but I have two guys on the field, their job. Uh, one guy gets whatever phase is going next uh, together. So like if I'm down there calling field goal block, he's getting kickoff ready. And then another coach, our, um, our freshman coordinator, his job is to handle substitutions. So he does the 11 count and then he goes and finds the guys we need. Uh, and then I have everybody. So everybody in the box has a responsibility and then they kind of communicate it through one guy. Uh, so we definitely have some improvement to do on our communication part, but uh, it's gotten better each, the two years I've been, been at Cypress Park. So okay. I, I, I get a pretty good amount of help. It's pretty nice. And then uh, my next question is when, when you're looking – when you're looking at your off season and what worked and what didn't, how long does that process of reviewing your film look? Uh, how long does that process take? And then um, when you are evaluating that, how much are you open to changing stuff or how much are you looking at it to, okay, how do, how can we coach this better or put kids in a better spot? Um, it usually takes me about a month. Uh, I really try to get into it. Like, um, like Coach Skubnik at ATU, he taught me how to how he did his breakdowns. They're very extensive, detail oriented, a lot of data to it. Uh, mine's pretty dialed back from that. Uh, like I don't I don't chart who all made tackles and stuff like that, but I chart uh, like who, how many blown assignments they have, blocking and punt. What what were our guys struggling with release wise? Um, where did we our hit chart? Um, Kind of looking for tendencies that we that we had, um, and then like uh, I felt on like punt block this year or punt return, we didn't we didn't get a block this year, which which was kind of upsetting but or disappointing. So I got to go back and look at what we were doing on if, if it was I think it was just 
think I may have overloaded them in scheme, uh, trying to do like having too many blocks per week. But um, it, it takes me a while. I'm pretty try to get as detailed as I can with it. Uh, but we go like we go into I did some over this break, and then we go into track season pretty quickly. So I gotta kind of gotta uh, manage my time on that, and work on it, get yeah. my off periods. I'm not doing lesson plans and stuff. Yeah. But I try to get really into it, and then um, that's pretty. That's like my main deal in the off season is the special team stuff. Off, off is the coordinator, and he's a, he's our O line coach as well. So yeah. he he kind of does what we need to improve on at the tight end position as well. No. Yeah. So. Well, Coach, I appreciate you coming on. Um, coaches that listened or watched, either or, if you're watching, his contact information is on the screen at the moment. Uh, but for those watching and listening, his contact information will also be in the bio. Um, that will be there for um, all of you to check out. Uh, please, if you have any questions for him, like I said, they do a bunch of other stuff with the field goal, tackle over, onsides, um, that you can reach out to Coach about. Um and so forth, and um, just like so just if you got any any questions for them, reach out, uh, like and subscribe. It helps the channel. Um, or if you're same thing with the all the podcasts, the Spotify and the Anchor helps everything out. Uh, helps other people find it. All that lovely stuff. Um, so again, thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Um, and this was another episode of the uh, Kick and Cover podcast.